Hi there, my name is Kendrick. And in this video, I'm gonna share my experience traveling to Easter Island in Chile, which is my country number 97. And that video is gonna come up right now. Easter Island has always been in my bucket list of travel destination. And the only problem is that getting to Easter Island is rather difficult and also expensive. Lucky for me, I managed to save up some Scotiabank scene points and use those scene points to help me reduce the cost of flying to Easter Island itself. Now for the actual trip to Easter Island itself, I was fearful that I was not gonna make it because when I left Canada to travel to Chile, I actually got stranded in Toronto and also in Montreal for five days total because of the snowmageddon. So when I finally made it to Chile and I was now gonna fly to Easter Island, I was worried that the flight was not gonna happen. Lucky for me, the flight did go through and it was a rather pleasant flight. And before I knew it, I managed to arrive in Easter Island with my girlfriend Karen to go enjoy and start our trip. Upon arriving in Easter Island, our host, his name is Francisco, picked us up from the airport and drove us back to the cottage that we rented through Booking.com. We had booked this cottage for four days and for you to explore the island after the pandemic, you are required to join a tour group to go see the archaeological sites. Now one of our hosts, Marcia, the lady that I've been doing some communications prior to going to Chile, has actually recommended a tour company to go take us around the island. The owner of the company, his name is Kita, along with his partner, Christopher. Well, actually show us around and to visit all the major sites. However, on our first day in the island, we had an absolute bad luck. It was January 1st, 2023, and all the restaurants were closed as a result of the new year. When we finally found a cafe that was still open, Karen and I ordered a chicken dish with French fries. And after eating it, by the time we went back to the cottage, we started feeling a little bit off. Before you knew it, we actually had food poisoning as a result of this meal. This will end up making our trip coming up to the future to be a painful one because of all the stomach issues that we're gonna experience as a result. Regardless, we still went through with the tour because we wanted to see the island and everything it has to offer. Now the tour company that we joined offered two separate tours and each of those tours is a full day tour to go see the archaeological sites. They cost 50,000 Chilean pesos each day. And the focus of this tour company is storytelling, which I will admit is actually one of the most fantastic tour I've ever joined in my life. After Kita and Christopher picks us up from our cottage, our first destination in Easter Island is a place called Vaihu. In this place, we got to check out how the early Easter Island Rapa Nui people, who are also Polynesians, how they live in this island. They pretty much had this big rock, which I forgot to make a video or take a picture of, where chickens would go inside to go sleep at night. They also showed us the hut where the king would live in, and we got to see both the inside and the outside of this hut. After checking out Vaihu, our next destination is Akahanga. In this spot, we got to see some Moai statue that was tipped over during the revolution in Easter Island. Christopher, our tour guide, also did a little bit of a quiz with me and Karen where he showed us this body of water that looks like a bay and he asked us how the local Rapa Nui people caught fish. And I gave him an answer that was apparently correct and a lot of people couldn't guess and that is they use the rocks to trap the fish inside this bay and kind of using it as a fishing farm. Now, because I was having some stomach issues, I also got a chance to use one of the ranger's personal washrooms. And my tour guide actually said that he's never been in there. So that was pretty cool for me to see some of the behind the scenes stuff. The next location is called Ahu Tepito Kura. Again, in this place, you can see more Moai statues that has been pushed over during the revolution. However, the main attraction that we actually see in this place is this stone that apparently had some magnetic properties to it and our tour guide said that we can make a wish on the side by the stone. After visiting this place, the next place that we're gonna visit is actually one of the major sites in the island. It's called Rano Raraku and in this place, this is where they quarry the rocks used to build the Moai statue themselves. This place is so huge you can actually see it from a far distance before even reaching this place. It does take some time to hike to go see the actual spot and once you get there there's tons of tourists but there's also tons of the Moai statues all over the place that you can see and they're all standing up and they look fantastic. On our way down from this place there was a unique statue that apparently was not part of the locals themselves because the Moai is actually a statue of the ancestors of the Rapa Nui people. However, they had this one particular statue 
that is a statue of another king that visited the island and apparently he was very popular with the locals so they made a statue of him. We also saw some unfinished statue that was being built on our way down and in this place if there is a slight bit of imperfection apparently the king would order the Rapa Nui people living in this island to go make another statue. So there's a lot of unfinished statues all over the place. Now before we left this place and we were taking pictures in front of this Muay, Christopher's aunt actually came and started chatting with us and apparently I was making fun of her because she said that she likes to go to Peru and drink Pisco Sour and I kind of insinuated that she was an alcoholic and apparently she didn't take it too well. <laughs> However, after we finished talking with her and we were a distance away from them, Christopher actually started laughing his ass off and thinking it was the funniest thing that I've ever said during the tour. So even though I was feeling sick during the tour, I still had some sense of humor and decided to crack some jokes because at the end of the day, I'm a troll. The next place that we visit is called Ahu Tonga Riki and this is the main event of the whole Easter Island in terms of the size of the statue. This place is full of massive standing statues and apparently at one point, a big tsunami hit the island, tipping them all over. Then a Japanese person came to the island and figured out a way to bring them back upright so they're standing for the tourists to see. And among all the statues there, they only put the top knot, which is that hat, on one of the statues. Now, the reason why the top knot is of the red color is to symbolize femininity because in the Rapa Nui culture, they respect both masculine and feminine energy, which makes a lot of sense. And I think it's a problem when you don't respect both of those energies. After taking lots of pictures and videos of this place, and that's what all the tourists were doing here, we got a chance to loop around the statue, see it from the backside before heading out to go to our next destination. The last destination that we visited is called Ahu Now Now, and this is actually the beach area, and nearby there's a lot of places where you can eat and buy food. But at this point, we did see some Moai, but I wasn't paying attention anymore at this point because I was feeling really sick. So I had informed our tour operator, Kita and Christopher, that I wasn't feeling very well. So we wrapped up the tour and they helped us get some food before heading back to our accommodation. We ended up getting some tuna, which is milder for our stomach than eating a chicken. And I spent the rest of the day just sleeping in the cottage as I tried to rest off the food poisoning bout that I was experiencing. On the third day on the island and doing our second full day tour, I was feeling a little bit better than the previous day, which is great. And I was able to enjoy this tour significantly more. Not that I didn't enjoy the previous day, I did enjoy it a lot, but obviously it's more enjoyable when you're not feeling sick. Our first stop is called Ahu Huri Ao Renga. And this is a lone Moai statue on the island, but I forgot the reason why this was important. The next spot that we visited is called Akivi, and this spot is fairly important because a lot of the statues here are well-preserved, they're standing upright, they're much smaller than the statues from the day before because the smaller statues are from the earlier days when they were building the Moai. And over time, they wanted bigger and bigger. So the smaller the statue, the older they are. This area is also the starting point if you plan on doing the trek to the highest point of the island. We didn't end up doing it because I was still not feeling good and I thought it would have been a bad idea. So we decided not to go through with the trek. However, Akivi itself was pretty cool. It was nice to see and we had a good time there before going to our next site. The next site is called Puna Pau and this is the quarry for the top knots that the Moais had on their heads. The rocks are significantly lighter than the actual Moais, which makes it easier for the Rapa Nui people to put on top of the head of the Moai statue. The next location that we visited is called Anakai Tangeta. And this place is super cool because basically you will walk down a flight of steps all the way down to a cave where waters are rushing in and going against this wall. And the wall in this cave at the bottom of the staircase have cave art from ancient times, which is super cool to see. After checking out the cave paintings, we were now off to the major site for the second day of the tour, which is called Ranukau. Ranukau is a volcanic crater, and apparently our tour guide, Christopher, he said that when he used to work as a ranger, he used to sleep there every day for almost a year. Right beside this volcanic crater is a place called Orongo, which is another major site for the Rapa Nui people. As you venture and walk your way into Orongo, you'll see some ancient dwellings in this place and apparently this is the starting point for a competition with the locals where they would take the strongest warriors and they would compete to go down to this island across the waters and apparently it was very dangerous and a lot of contestants died during this contest and apparently they had to get like a bird egg and they had to bring it back and the winner gets to spend the night with the princess which apparently strengthens the gene pool of the locals. After checking out the competition area and the dwellings, we went back inside Orongo 
there's a museum in this place and our tour guide Christopher showed us around the museum before heading to our next destination. The last location we visited is called Vinapu and lots of tourists are in this place. The significance of this place is because this is the only location in the entire Easter Island that has Moai statue that was actually female. And you know that the statue is female because the material they use to make the statue is similar to the one that they use for the top knot, which is that red rock. After the tour was finished, we said our goodbyes to Kita and Christopher who were absolutely fantastic. I love their tour and I highly recommend that if you go to Easter Island, you join a tour with them. They speak perfectly good English and they're very down to earth and they also like to tell a lot of jokes. Before dropping us off to our cottage, we got some food to eat and then before long, we were now spending time to relax in our place. We also got a chance to use this third day to do some laundry. So we went to a local laundry place to get our clothes washed, which was going to be ready for our fourth day in the island. And we also got a chance to cook some home cooked meals while we were on this day. So for Karen and I, we actually brought some food from the mainland from Santiago and I made some pasta. We had some canned tuna to go with our pasta and also we ate some local tiny bananas. By our fourth day into the island, we managed to pick up our laundry and just spend some time relaxing in our cottage trying to recover from the food poisoning bath. And we also tried cooking some instant noodles. We put some eggs on top of it. It was really yummy and also had some local mango juice. So our last day in the island was pretty pleasant and very comfortable. On our final day on the island, Marcia's husband Francisco took us back to the airport. We said our goodbyes to her. Marcia has been one of the most fantastic hosts you could ever ask for in any place. And I would also recommend staying in their cottage should you go to Easter Island. The cottage is very comfortable. It has all the cooking utensils you need to prepare a meal. And her hospitality is second to none. While Karen and I were suffering from food poisoning, she actually showed us the leaf from a guava plant and boiled it. And we drank it as tea to help us recover. And it did make a big difference. Check-in process in the airport on our way back was, was fairly quick. There is an immigration process there as well. And it's because I think before COVID started, flights from Tahiti and Lima, Peru used to go there as well. So that's why they have an immigration process in Easter Island, even though it's technically a domestic flight from Santiago. I bought an overpriced sandwich from the airport to have something to eat before flying back to Santiago to continue our trip in Chile. And our next destination is going to be the Atacama Desert. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave your comments below. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.